This is Twit. Disturbing news. Jeffrey Fowler uh, wrote about it in the uh, Washington Post today. Uh, that some companies, including, uh, I think, the CDC and other health authorities, are using uh, advertisements to track us. To <laughs> So they're, they're buying ads which send back geolocation information. And as a result, um, they are knowing where people are congregating, not congregating, uh, it, it, does that worry anybody, uh, the idea that perhaps um, we're entering a surveillance system? And, you know, this is what happens when you have a crisis is, you know, as it happened with 9-11 and uh, the Patriot Act, you suspend, you know, our traditional uh, rights to solve a crisis. But does it concern you that all of a sudden this cell phone location information, which is we've been battling over for the last few years anyway is being used in this way. What about you, Lexi? Is this something that concerns you? Yeah, I mean, I think anyone who, you know, has been following this for, you know, any time in terms of um, all the implications that this might have, as you just said, with, you know, enacting anything in the Patriot Act kind of way or, you know, just, you know, in the time of an emergency to think that what will happen when this is all over and, you know, be able to roll back the things that have been implemented in terms of tracking. I mean, I've been thinking about this a lot and, you know, the ways to kind of circumvent it, obviously, like, I, you know, if you have to go outside, if, if you are going to be flagrantly, you know, going against uh, regulations, like you would leave your phone at home, you know, turn on airplane mode, things like that. Um, but I, you know, I just... But this information is useful. And yeah. I, it, we kind of want to help, right? So the, no, but apparently like, the government you, is in talk, has been in talks with Facebook and Google and other companies about how they can use location data to combat the virus. Then they're buying ads because it turns out, oh, what a surprise. Those ads tell you where, tell the buyer where their viewers are and they're aggregating this. On the one hand, I think it's great if it can, if it helps us beat the virus. Is it a, but yeah, is it right. a bad precedent? So you're saying, Lexi, are you, are, are you turning off your location information when you go out? Well, I'm not going out. That's the thing. Good, good. I, <laughs> good. Yeah, no, absolutely not. I, I don't want to, uh, to be misinterpreted. I'm definitely not uh, leaving the house without an absolute necessity. Um, but just, just thinking about the ways that, like, this is going to have implications if this continues to happen after the, the crisis is over and, right. you know, as... As you know, as you say, you want anything, any data that we have access to now to help stop the spread of this. But, you know, once this is said and done, to continue to have this, you know, monitoring, this tracking um, through advertising, through whatever it might be, through data from, you know, cellular providers or even from, you know, the, the phone manufacturers too. There's a lot to think about in terms of, you know, the trade-offs that have to be made here. And, you know, it's scary enough thinking about the situation that we're all, all currently facing with the virus, let alone, you know, the data protection stuff that we also have to add on top of it. Seth, you're a security guru. Does it worry you? <laughs> uh, yeah. And I think I think it's a lot of uh, smoke and mirrors at this point. Um, fewer than 50 percent of the state's uh, in, you know, in the U.S., have shelter-in-place orders or similar at this point. Um, uh, certainly, municipalities have been better about it, uh, but but not all of them have. And I I can't remember which state, but one of them even um, uh, the governor decided to declare that municipalities couldn't enforce shelter-in-place laws that were uh, regulations that were stricter than uh, the ones that the state had. Um, yeah, I think that you know, was, was it Tennessee. I think, yeah, it was some place with a lot of gun stores. I think, and and oh. I, I mean, oh. oh, was that on two on the point, <laughs> point there? So I, I feel I feel like you know, like sure, if we are struggling to prevent people from going out, yes, location data could be helpful. But we're not even we're, we're trying. That, that, trying that's to do running. That. Yeah. That's running. We're not even crawling at this point. And I think that this is going to be just seeing the, 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 the patterns of how people got infected in China, in Italy, in other places where it was really severe. Suddenly what we're doing in the U.S. is nothing. I mean, we have more cases in the U.S., more positive coronavirus cases in the U.S. than China has, right. has had this entire time. 
Um, Although this who is knows what China's numbers? Sure, sure. Even really if mean. look, even if even if China is suppressing their numbers, right. it's a very bad. Uh, exponential increase well, here in the U.S. As, as an example, South so Korea... The location stuff is scary. Yeah, but. China's used it. South Korea's used it, apparently with great effect. They had an app that tracked people and would alert authorities if they left home, you know? You're, well, you're, and... and I, <laughs> and that's what it and and that's what you really I, I mean, if you're going to use location data as a way to manage public behavior, then be transparent about it. One of the things that that the countries that have been successful with this have been doing, as you mentioned there, is that the big thing they've been doing is contact tracing so that if you can use that location data to say this person was very near a person right. who was infected, right. um, sure. then then you can you can quarantine those people until it's clear that they either w are infected or aren't, um, and you know you can stop the spread that way. Uh, you know, and so that I mean that's what. But the, this this weird ass uh, idea that you can sneak in and grab a bunch of location data from advertising. That's you know that's going to be blocked by a bunch of people anyway. It's that know, it's would be only, my concern to, is that people's knee jerk yeah. reaction might be to yeah. shut this stuff down, to leave their phones at home and it's, so forth. So the idea that this is going to do any good, uh, I mean, I think it's I, it, it's it has a whiff of desperation to it. Maybe let's gather this information and see if we can use it right. for something later. Maybe the data will be useful. Um, and that's kind of been the way that online advertising has worked for the last few years. Uh, let's collect everything because maybe we don't know how much of it's going to be useful. This is a company called Unicast. They get location data from games, social media apps, 5,000 different apps people install. And they actually have a location data toolkit and a social distancing scoreboard so that organiz so that you can get a score about how well you're doing in social distancing in the country. Uh, session ended by server. I guess I'm going to get a new a new uh, a, a new uh, session here. The top states, according to this, are D.C., Alaska, Nevada, New Jersey, and New York. The bottom states are Idaho, North Dakota, South Dakota. You don't need to do social distancing in Montana and Wyoming. There's nobody there. So, uh, so what is that? I mean, what it, part of the problem is is that the data here has doesn't seem to appear to have a lot of connection to positive cases. New York, ha we know, has the right, highest number right. of of uh, positive coronavirus cases in the country. And yet they're also excelling so this, at social distancing. So it would seem to imply that social distancing doesn't work, but we know that it works right. because we've seen it work in other places. Right. So this kind of, of, of data flimflammery, I think, is, is really bad for people. <laughs> yeah. Is that a technical term? It's a good term. I like flimflammery. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, of course, when this is going to really be useful and important, and maybe even we'll all give permission to do this, since we're not going to have herd immunity or a vaccine for another year at least, what's going to happen when social distancing works and ends in some number of months? The only thing you can do is what, what South Korea is doing at this point, which is now you've got to track positive tests. You've got to test all the time, track positive tests, and be very aggressive with those. Go back to the containment strategy that we never pursued here in the U.S. That's what we're going to have to do for the next year. Once, once you know, we can get this thing under control, and that's when these apps are going to really be useful. My guess is companies that, like Unicast, which has they've long been selling this information for other reasons. The real reason they're doing this is is they see a opportunity uh, in the coming months, and I'm not sure it's a bad thing. Uh, shouldn't we use technology to 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 save us to solve transparently? Us? I like yes. you. I like that, Ed. You're right. You got to let people know you're doing it and why. Yeah, and yeah, uh, disclose up front. Here's what we're doing. Here's why it's important for you to opt in to it. And here's where your data is. And right. here's how. Uh, and here are the uh, uh, the the judgments 
uh, and and activities that we've taken in response to that data. If you have that kind of transparency, um, I you know I think you can go a long ways towards getting rid of people's trepidation about it. I feel good about so this is. It's interesting because, of course, we're uh, this all happened in the middle of this debate over how big tech is, you know, is getting too big and privacy and, and, and security concerns. This is a big debate that's been going on for the last couple of years. Some say companies like Amazon are jumping on the bandwagon. They're taking advantage of this to consolidate power. Others say, and I'm, I'm not sure which camp I fall in. I'm curious what you all think. Others say, no, the tech companies are stepping forward to help. Apple's making a COVID-19 site. Amazon's hired 100,000 people uh, to help deliver products. In fact, many of us are relying on Amazon just to keep stuff we need in stock. Walmart's hired 150,000 people. Maybe these aren't the best jobs in the world, but they're jobs. And there's so many people out of work uh, in the restaurant industry and in the service industries. It, it, do, it, are tech companies our saviors? Or are they taking advantage of this opportunity? Or both? Yes. <laughs> yeah, definitely both. Yeah. Uh, 